Yes. So as you can see, I'm Antiaro from Snapshot Labs. And today I'll be presenting Checkpoint. So Checkpoint is an indexer for StarkNet, MainNet, and TestNet. It's an indexer for StarkNet that we initially built internally for Snapshot X and that we decided to make public. So I don't know if some people here is familiar with what's an event, what's a smart contract event. Yeah? So I, I, I can explain. So an event is like a notification system integrated directly into your contracts that will allow you to notify the whole network that something has changed. That uh, something um, was, was uh, initiated in the blockchain. For example, if you look at this transfer event in Cairo 1, you can see that uh, there are three values, from, to, and value. So each time you will do a transfer event, what will happen is that you will communicate to the network who send w which amount to who. So what's really cool with that is that people can, can continuously listen to those events and be notified whenever something has changed. And that's why people created indexers. So indexers basically will just continue to listen to events, check for any state change, store it in a database, and make it easily accessible via an API endpoint. So this is uh, uh, an easiest way uh, and way faster way to access blockchain data. And that's literally what Checkpoint does. So Checkpoint is really, really, really simple. Checkpoint will check block by block if the contract you want to index emitted an event, if so, is that the event that we want to track? And if it's the case, it will provide you a lot of data around that event so you can manipulate it, store it, and make it easily accessible via GraphQL endpoint. So Checkpoint is a TypeScript uh, library, so it's really easy to use and to set up. It's composed of four main components. So only four files to, to have a Checkpoint instance running. So you have the config.json, which is basically the, the tower control of your, of your indexer. You will put all the parameters uh, of what you want to index, how you want to index it, from which block you will start, the node URL so you can access blockchain data. And you have also index.ts. Index.ts is like uh, the earth of your project, is where you will just launch your server, uh, launch your GraphQL endpoint, your database, and uh, communicate with it. You don't have to touch it. It's already set up uh, in the template. Then you have schema.graphql. Schema.graphql is the way you will store the data. So you will tell your indexer uh, like how to store the, the data. We are using GraphQL, which, so the data will be stored as entities that will get uh, values and the, the associated type. And then writers.ts, which is the place where, where you will do most of the job. Writers.ts basically is where you will get the data. You will receive the data from, uh, from Checkpoint each time the event uh, you wanted to track uh, has been reached. So I can show you uh, how, how does it work in practice. So I did, uh, I don't know if uh, some people were in the StarkNet Meetup Amsterdam uh, two months ago. But I did something, uh, I did an arbitrage bot based on checkpoint. So how did I process? So you can see here in the source, I have config, index, schema, uh, uh, schema and writers. So in my config.json, uh, what I have I, is three pairs. So one from uh, seed swap, one from Jedi swap, and one, one from 10k swap. Those three pairs uh, are indexing ETH USDC. And what I wanted to track, uh, here you can see, I wanted to track the sync event. Why? Because the sync event will return two values from the, from the reserves, so the reserves changes. So then if I get the reserves, I can get the price of the pool in real time. So uh, you can see here, I have my network URL, so you can just uh, set, set the alchemy endpoint uh, in front and all to that, for that access. Then uh, I added optimistic indexing to also index pending blocks because I want to get the data earlier. And then uh, I have my starting blocks, so I don't want to index the contract uh, if it hasn't been deployed. 
So I just put it the deployed the deployment deployment blocks. Then index.ts, index as I said, nothing changed here. You just start your checkpoint instance, your express server. Uh, there is also a GraphQL server, and you can also choose a, a PostgreSDB instead of MySQL. And then here in your schema.graphql, as I said, I had three uh, three data that I wanted to index. So the seed swap pair, the GDI swap pair, and the 10K pair. Uh, I added some metric, so I will be tracking uh, my opportunities, my rewards along the time. And um, yeah, so I'm storing basically reserve zero, reserve one over the time. Uh, then store the price, the timestamp, and uh, the last block where, where I synced and the last takes. Because here, if you look at the writers where everything happened, I have my handle sync function that I defined earlier in my config. So each time I reach the handle sync, the sync event from my pairs, I will be redirected to that, that handle sync function with four parameters, block, takes, Rivant and MySQL. So basically, block will will give me all the data around the block that the, the event was emitted, takes the same, and Rivant uh, the data of the event. Here, the data of, of the the sync event is reserve and reserve one. So, as you can see, let me check. Uh, I had not time to to get a new URL key. Let me check if I can get one really fast. So. As, you, as I said, you, you just need a, an RPC kit for, for data access. What's cool, I'm not sure if some people here are familiar with the graph, but what's cool with, the uh, with Checkpoint is that it's sufficiently low level. So you can manipulate all the data, all the config, the way you want, but uh, it, so, so it's, it's really flexible, really modular. Let me, let me show you. Let me get a StarkNet key. Hop. Config. I just refer the key here. Nice. So it's a node module. So I just yarn. Then I should. It should be working that way. So yeah. So you can see I'm indexing data. I'm indexing uh, all the blocks. And then if I get uh, a new price, it will be updated here. You can see like uh, I, I reached a new price. Let me show you my 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 methods in the writers. So basically. Um, what I do is that in my writers, it's a really simple uh, uh, arbitrage bot. It just it just check for the price, and if there is a threshold reached, it will uh, it will do the, the the methods for swapping. So I have my find function that will check for that threshold. And in my writers, what I do is just that I check for if the pairs already exist. If it already exists, I update the data. If uh, I update the data, close remote. If I update the data, then uh, I, I should swap after that. So yeah, that works this way. And what's cool is that here, locally, I think it's on the port for, yeah, I have access to my data in real time. So, so here you can see that there are some price updates and it's really, 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 really fast to get that data. So that's the whole purpose of indexers, having really fast data. And checkpoint is really, really easy to set up. Four files, config, index, writers, and schema. And you have your instance running. So yeah, that's all.